Hi, my name is Michael Wessel. I'm a photographer of many years uh, working in a, as a professional in the industry, doing furniture photography currently f in, here in Virginia. I am also do a lot of portraiture and some video work. We're going to be looking at large format photography in this video series. Specifically, we're going to look at film and digital backs for large format cameras. We're going to be looking at shifts, tilts, and swings for camera movements. We're going to also look at things like loading your film and taking your first images with, your, uh, with a large format camera. We're going to look into the ideas of how to use the meter and the zone system in photography. We're going to learn how to calculate bellows extension factor and work with the shine fluke principle, which is all about focus planes. We're going to um, look at projects such as architecture, portraiture, still life, and landscapes, and more. I look forward to working with you through these videos and you joining us in our quest to make really good photographs with the large format camera in the studio and out in the wild. Welcome to our studio. We're going to be looking at the large format camera or view cameras. Uh, you may have a totally different camera than what I'm using in the studio here or that I'm going to be showing. We're just going to go over the general principle of how to set up a view camera from tripod all the way up to setting up the camera. So let's get started. Let's take a look at how to set up the view camera on its tripod and all the parts that, it, uh, that goes with it. Let's look at setting up our tripod first. So we're gonna start with our tripod. This is a uh, heavy duty tripod, specifically uh, used mostly for large format uh, view cameras. It's, it's uh, pretty heavy as far as weight goes, so it's gonna uh, hold up uh, the poundage for the view camera. Uh, the view camera weighs somewhere between usually about 10 pounds to 20 pounds, so the tripod needs to be able to hold that type of uh, weight uh, specifically. So with the heavy duty tripod here, let's just get started on setting it up. We're going to release the tension knobs on the legs in the center here so that we can spread out the legs. As we spread them out, a lot of these will have a little click in them. Some of them don't. If they're older, they'll have lost that click. Um, if you have the one that wants to click into place, that helps to actually set the, uh, the width um, on each leg as you're, setting, as you're pulling them out. Um, if you don't, that's okay. Just set them up as, or get them as well as you can. Um, if we look at this one, we set it down, the, uh, the legs should be already, um, if they're splayed out correctly, are level here on our tripod, uh, should already be level, and it's not. So we're going to adjust this, the legs, until we have the correct amount of distance between them. And we got one more leg here to adjust. And now I have an exact centered bubble. So my bubble is centered. I can now raise the tripod. Let's look at uh, moving the legs up. But one of the things, if you're using um, this outside, then you're going to want to use the spikes on the bottom. If you're not using it outside, make sure that you adjust this so that the rubber is um, forward on the uh, feet so that when you're actually working in the, uh, like a studio or on a wood surface or whatever, you're not scratching uh, the um, linoleum or the wood surface with your tripod. That would be very bad. Those spikes are great when you're outside because if you have them out and using the spikes outside, it will stick into the ground a little bit and help you to actually keep the tripod a little bit more stable. Um, wait, once we have this set up and ready, or uh, once we have the spikes then we're just going to extend the legs and depending on how tall you are, how high, you're going to want these. I'm a pretty tall guy so I'm going to want these pretty tall but I don't want the camera to be so high that I can't um, access it easily and I may need to reset these after I get the camera on but this is generally about the height for me, um, just one uh, use of the legs. 
Um, I tend to use the uh, heavier part of the leg to, for the uh, most support and then I'll bring out the bottom extensions if I need uh, more support. That way I'm putting most of the weight on the heavier parts of the poles. On our camera here, we're looking at the bottom of the camera. This piece right here is called the rail. This rail is what our standards are attached to. So down here at the bottom of the rail, our standards are attached to this. Um, rails on cameras are different and each camera can have its own different type of rail. For the horseman, it has actually two sections. There's an upper section and a lower section. So the upper section is where the camera attaches to and the bottom section allows our rail clamp to be attached to it. The rail clamp on this particular camera does not come off. Uh, while well, it can come off, you can take it off the ends if you need to. Um, it also can, um, of course, um, move forward or backwards on your rail system so that you can actually place the weight differently on the rail. So we've got our quick release here. This is the, the quick release for the, um, the Monfrotto tripod that I have here in the studio. We're going to be using this particular one each time. Um, there, you may have a different quick release that's up to, uh, up to your type of tri tripod that you're using. This uh, uh, quick release has a nice area here that is uh, rubbered, uh, rubberized so that it will not slip. We have a standard uh, screw type here that we're going to add to, the, um, to our base here. They usually come in two different sizes uh, for the most part uh, in the U.S. Uh, you'll have either a quarter or a half inch um, screw head. Um, this one is a quarter inch screw head. We're going to add it to the quarter inch slot here so that uh, there's two slots in the bottom of our camera here. We'll add this to it. Uh, to do this we're going to use the black knob at the top here and just uh, start to attach this. We're gonna, when looking at this particular plate, uh, this plate actually has a specific way that it needs to be put on here. It says towards lens, so we're going to, the lens is down here in the front, so we're going to make sure that it is facing towards the lens. We're going to hold it down in place as we tighten this down. Now the tightening down, we're just going to get it to uh, be uh, fairly tight, but not overly tight. To tighten it down and get it towards uh, fine, um, fine tightening, we're going to use the gray fine tightening knob here and just tighten this down until it is uh, nice and snug on here so that it doesn't move easily then this is going to now attach to our tripod. Uh, we've uh, looked at um, adding the quick release. Since the quick release is now on our camera, let's take a look at putting the camera on the tripod. When you pick up your camera, make sure that you're using both hands to pick it up, that, uh, that you've got a good grip on the rail itself as you're doing this. Uh, we're going to flip the camera over gently, and we're going to take this to put this on our quick release. Um, as we put this in here, we need to make sure that we notice where our handles are so that when we are done setting up, the camera is going to actually be going the correct direction for us to use. Currently, if I put this on here now, this handle is going to be at the wrong end. So we're going to flip the camera, or turn the camera around. You're going to see the back of the camera for this, but that's okay. We're just going, we'll return the, uh, the tripod around here in a minute. Let's now put this in place. Click. This is locked now into place as you hear the click. Make sure that you hear the click and then make sure this tightened down just enough. Don't overly force the, the um, quick release plate to uh, lock in um, too much when you're putting this on. So now that the camera's on here, we can look at um, the parts of the camera and how to set the camera or how the parts of the camera work. We're going to start with uh, the, this particular 4x5, which is a horseman. The parts of the uh, view camera start with, and just from the side view here, we can see the front standard, the back standard. Uh, our film plane goes uh, is back here. We've also got our bellows, and um, we've got our rail down here at the bottom. Let's take a look at each of these components, but first I want to talk about when you take the camera out of the box, out of your box, and you're ready to get it ready for use, it should be in what's called the zero position. The zero position is when the two standards, the front and the back standard, the front and the back standard, are together as tight as they can get with the bellows in between pretty much squished to, uh, to a point where it can't actually come together any closer. 
Um, the, so the, there's no rise and fall in place at the moment. Uh, the standards are uh, together close. Uh, they're not neither one of these are tilted or swung. So that is uh, the zero position. Let's take a look at actually moving the planes apart. So we're going to move the back, uh, the back plane away from the front plane here. And then I'm going to show you how to take the bellows off the camera. So to do this, we're going to come down here to the rail and each standard moves forward or backward for focusing. So we're going to use the focusing knobs down here, but to do that on this particular camera, and not all cameras have this, it has a, um, a tension knob for tightening to make sure that your focus plane doesn't go, or your, uh, when you're at focusing the camera, that you can tighten this up and make sure that the camera does not move out of focus. The next knob over is our focusing knob, and it allows us to move the camera, the, the front bellows, for, or the bellows uh, is going to start separating, and the front standard here is going to move forward, or we can also move the front standard backward. So we can, um, once we have it in place where we want it, we can tighten it down. The same with the back standard. We can actually then release the tension knob here and then move the um, back bell or the back standard um, further back, or we can also move it forward. We're going to, in this case, since we're taking the bellows off for the, for the moment, we're going to get these so that they're pretty well separated. And we're going to turn our tension knob on the bottom down here so that it's not neither one of these will slip while we're doing that. To take the bellows off, we're going to use the two uh, locking me mechanisms at the top and the bottom of the on the back of the standard. So I'll pop this one up, and that's going to release uh, the bellows. Uh, the bottom apparently wasn't in properly, so it wasn't seated properly, so it came off immediately. Um, so it needs to be seated properly. We'll look at that in just a second. Um, I'm going to do the same with the back. I'm going to release the, um, the, tension, uh, the, um, the tension on the bellows uh, with the slider right here. And then I'm also going to do the same and release it from the bottom there. And then I can take the bellows out completely. Uh, we can check the bellows then. We can hold it up to the light, make sure that there's no holes in the bellows at all. And once we do that, and we can also clean the bellows out if necessary, maybe uh, using a vacuum or a duster, uh, something that's going to keep it from getting any dust in it at all. We don't want to have dust in our bellows. Um, we can also clean out uh, any of these sections here if they need cleaning while we have it out. So we can clean the back standard or the front standard. To replace the bellows, um, certain bellows, like this particular one, has to go in a specific direction. So I want to make sure that I, when I put this into the uh, frame here, uh, that it goes in properly. I'm going to put the bottom of the bellows into the back frame, uh, the back uh, standard here, and make sure that it goes into place. Then once it's in place, I'm going to push the tension lock down here uh, up and so that it is tightened into place and the one on the top down so that that is tightened into place. Then move the bellows forward, put the bellows back in place at the bottom down here, and then we'll push it down here. There we go. Now the bellows is back in place by uh, using the tension locks here at the top and the bottom. The bellows can then, is then made sure that it is attached properly so that we don't have any getting light leaks from either um, edge. If one of these is not locked in properly, then the bellows can let in light and ruin your film if you're using film, or uh, you may, uh, even if you're using a digital sensor on the back of the view camera, that may also cause uh, exposure issues. Let's take a look now at the front of our, uh, the front standard. Let's turn the camera towards the cameras and let's take the front or look at the front standard. So this is our front standard. The front standard has um, the lens is holding the lens. It's also got our shutter release cord and it also has our lens board. The lens board just like the bellows attaches to the front of the camera and can be removed so that you can remove your lenses. This is how we swap out lenses. Um, we don't just uh, you know turn the lens, pop it off, and, and put another lens on like we would do with our DSLRs. With this, we actually have to remove the entire lens board. Uh, each lens may have a different type of lens board, so uh, that's the reason for that. We pull up on the slider on the top, 
hand on the bottom, just like we did with the bellows, lift it out, and now we can see into the camera and through the back of the camera. Uh, you can see here's our, um, our, uh, our lens board. The lens board is going to go, when we put it back, is going to go bottom first into place and then the top into place, sliding the sl bottom slider, making sure that we hold, hold the lens in place. I have a little bit of issue with this one. It doesn't like to lock on the bottom. So I'm pushing up on the right hand or on the left hand side to make sure that it goes in place. And then I'll push the top down and make sure just by pulling on the lens just slightly, I can make sure that this is in good in place and it, tend, it looks like it's uh, nice and tight now and locked into place. Let's take a look now at our, um, how to attach a shutter release cord. So our shutter release cord is attached to um, our shutter. Um, to our shutter here. Let's just turn this a little bit. Sometimes these get locked into place pretty well. Um, so here's our shutter on our uh, camera. A lot of times, uh, you, you, most all photographers that use view cameras never actually use the uh, shutter release by itself. We usually always use the shutter release cord. To, re, uh, to replace this or to put one in, make sure that it goes straight into, the, um, the, uh, into its place, into this little holder. And as you tighten it down, make sure that it doesn't strip out the, uh, uh, the screw holdings. And once you have it in place and tightened down, there we go, uh, you'll be able to fire your lens. So we now have um, our uh, release cord in place. Um, the, we'll look at lenses in a different video, but our lens is up here in the front and ready to go. On our uh, camera here, we have uh, several different knobs. Each one of these has makes for different movements on our um, on our standard, and it will allow us to move the lens into different positions. The top one here is for tilting. So if we release it, we also can see angles and degrees on this particular camera. We can then tilt the lens either forward or backward, and we'll talk more about what these do these functions and why we want the, to use these later in, our, um, in another video series. So we're going to tighten this back down, but you can see that it tilts backwards and forwards. Down here on, the, on this knob, this one allows us to use our rise. So you can see that the uh, lens goes up or it can come down. There is a zero position again for this, just like um, this knob here, there is a zero position. Once it's in the zero position, I'm going to lock this down. The next one is our swings um, down here at the bottom. We release the tension on here, and this allows us to swing the lens plane forward, or I mean sideways, either way. Let's put this back into the zero position and then tighten this down. Now our camera is back into uh, the front standard is back into zero position. Let's take a look at the back standard. On our back of our camera, on the, stand, the back standard, we have our film plane. This is our film plane. We could also attach a digital sensor or digital back to the film plane area. Uh, that will be in another one of our videos. The back here can be unattached just like our, um, our lens board or our, um, or our bellows. To do that, again, we just be using the sliders, pull up, making sure that we hold this. We don't want the glass to get broken. I've had that happen to me before. I've had a good hold on it. If you drop it, you could uh, then break the glass. Now, we're going to put this back. We could put it back in portrait mode, or we could put it in landscape mode. With this particular camera, you don't want to turn this this direction, because this would be in the way of your film, uh, your film holder as you're putting it in. So make sure that you put it in properly. We're going to seat this into the portrait position. This could also go into the landscape mode position. Once it's in, I'm going to uh, lock the bottom lock, making sure that it is nice and tight. There that goes. And then we're going to lock the top lock into place. Now this will not come out. It's nice and tight in here. Um, our film, um, our, the uh, film plane here, I'm going to turn this just a slight bit so you can see this a little better. Is 
when we have this ready to go, uh, and we're ready to put a film holder in here, we can pull this out and slide the film holder in. Don't pull this out too far because if you do, there is a spring in here that can be popped and this might come off. Um, so we don't want to pull it out too far as uh, we're getting ready to load our film. We would then slide our sl um, film holder into the, uh, into the camera and that would hold our film. So we're looking at the back standard here. Now let's look at the knobs. The knobs here, the top knob is for just like the uh, front standard. On the back standard, um, we can actually adjust our uh, back standard plane, uh, film plane by undoing the top knob here and we'll, we can do tilts. So this is a tilt forward and a tilt backwards. These two tilts will come in handy and we'll look at these in our, uh, specifically in our um, perspective uh, video. Turning this and locking this back down once it's back into the zero position. And then we can loosen the bottom knob here. And this is going to allow us again to use the rise and fall options of the camera by either allowing us to go up or down with our film plane. We'll lock this mechanism down again, and once it's back into the zero position. Down here at the bottom of the back uh, of our, um, our film plane is also another, um, is our, one of our other options here. We're gonna put this into its correct position and, uh, or our loosened position, and then we can actually um, swing our uh, film plane back and forth. And once we've got, uh, got it into position, uh, back into zero position, we'll lock this back down. So one of the other options with our camera is that you can actually uh, move the camera side to side. So the, um, the cam this is now going in a lateral movement back and forth. So you can adjust the back standard, either right or left. And that on this particular camera is down here on the bottom. We're going to do the same here. Front, side, to side. And then back to zero position. I like the uh, Horseman for one reason. that A lot of times it has uh, places where you can actually feel it go into the zero position and it locks kind of right into that, uh, into that place. Um, and it's easy to tell when it's into the zero position. We're going to now look at the levels on our camera. I'm going to swing the camera around just a slight bit, just like that, so we can see them better. The levels here uh, on this particular camera are here and here, one on the back standard, one on the front standard. You can also uh, purchase and put on the top of this uh, more levels if you need them in these, pl in these positions. A lot of uh, professionals will bring along a level to actually add to both of these uh, to make sure that the, uh, the, uh, our standards are level when we're taking our first shots. Um, once again, this is uh, our view camera. We need to uh, get it ready to go back into the box. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm just going to release both of the, uh, the standards, get this back into the center of the, uh, of the rail, lock these standards down. I've already put everything else into the zero position as far as uh, the, uh, the shifts, swings, and tilts. So those are all back in the standard, um, into the zero positions. This thing is ready to go back into my box. I'm gonna get this into the box, and I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. I'm Michael Wessel, and thanks for watching.